Um, when I submitted the session to Alex, um, he said, well, we need a, a cool title for it. And uh, uh, Alex made a very good suggestion, the gone in 60 seconds. So I really, really liked that. And initially, I just wanted to show uh, the thing for 2008 R2. But I thought, well, it's actually so easy, we can do it in a minute. So what am I going to do in the other 29 minutes of the session? <laughs> So I thought, well, maybe it's fun uh, to step back in time a little. Um, so basically, I've been looking for exploits for all of these OSs. And it turns out that we can get the passwords for all these versions um, with just a few clicks. Um, so the plan is I'm just going to do a demo. I'm not going to do that by PowerPoint. And I'm going to start with Windows 2000. Um, I'm just going to see it. My voice is a little bad. It's all a class of it does it help either. Um, I have a couple of VMs running here. One of those is um, Windows 2000. Uh, and I'm just going to start a couple of remote desktop sessions. I made a folder here with some RDP files. I'm just going to log some people in. I'm having some users. I just picked some random names. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> I clicked uh, the Windows 2000 and connected to the server. Oh and I'm even doing this remotely. <laughs> so, yeah, I had, to, I had to make some funny passwords, so I just took something. Um, this is how easy it is. So, uh, actually, this particular uh, bug was fixed uh, in uh, Surface Pack 4 with some additions. And what they did is, uh, these passwords are unencrypted in the memory of terminal server, and they still are. They're just not passing it out anymore. So, uh, <coughs> it wasn't really a fix, but we might see more of that later on. <coughs> so let's go to Windows XP. Let's see where I hit the VM. Um, I have installed um, a terminal server patch on Windows XP so we can log in more than one user simultaneously so we can see one, more than one password at the same time. So I'm just going to log on my sample random users to the XP box. I think my patch is not working anymore. <laughs> I'm going to need to log off here. This is a little bad because I need to log on locally to do the demo. So I think the demo god is attacking me. <laughs> um, let's see if we can. You only sacrificed three children. I'm sorry? You only sacrificed three small children? Is that yeah. And, yeah, and a goat, perhaps if it helps. <laughs> um, I'm sacrificing the waiter from the restaurant. <laughs> because this particular exploit. Uh, it cannot show uh, a password for uh, people logging onto the console, so I have to really uh, log on uh, with remote desktop. So uh, I'm just going to log off and log on with remote desktop, and hopefully it will work then. And else we'll just move on to the next OS. quite interesting if we look um, at the way Microsoft tried to prevent us from getting this password. Um, I've made a little disassembly from uh, Terminal Server, from HP. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. See the matrix. 
<laughs> this API, which is not documented, and it's called WinStation Query Logon Credentials. And if you are me, this is something that draws your attention. <laughs> <laughs> if we look into uh, what this API does, it calls an RPC function. And basically, it sends some data over the wire to terminal server, and uh, it gets some stuff back. And one of the things it passes here uh, is the session ID. So, um, Microsoft probably thought, hey, if we make this function um, hard code the session ID, um, then you can only get your own password, which, which isn't really that bad. And what I actually did in my code, um, this uh, session ID is read from a specific area in uh, the process you are running, and we can simply write there. So I just enumerate all the sessions that are running on the server, and I just modify this value, and then I query the next password. <laughs> so this this is not protection. This is just a lazy programmer uh, who fixed it rapidly, and uh, they made a big mess, uh, basically. Out of it. You probably probably will say, but not documenting. <laughs> yes. And um, on 2003, um, they went a little further. Um, it's the same API with the same function. Um, but they're encrypting the memory with an API, and we can simply use the corresponding API to decrypt it. <laughs> and what's even more interesting, um, I spent quite some time on 2008 R2, and I found uh, the Cleotex passwords that are still present in Terminal Server, and I wanted to get them out. And when I was Googling, uh, and now comes the scary part, I found a tool that dumps all the passwords, but not only the terminal server passwords, but also just the administrator logged on locally, anybody connected to a share, and any seven-year-old can run it, because it's only three lines of text that you can copy-paste from <laughs> this guy's blog, and that's it. Okay. So I thought, well, it might be more cool to show his tool than mine, <laughs> yeah. um, so that's what I'm going to do. You're actually going to tell us how to prevent it, so... I... No. <laughs> Even I read it more. I was, I was thinking of what Sasha did in his slides. He had his money yeah, and his yeah. phone. <laughs> so call me. Um, <laughs> let's see if anyone is already locked on. Not yet. So let's go back to my random users. Secure, yeah. <laughs> That's quite funny. <laughs> I don't have an entry point at Microsoft uh, yeah. to submit these kind of things. Um, I did it in the past, uh, but I end up at some product support where they don't really understand what I'm telling them. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> wonder why. <laughs> yeah, and then at the end they asked me to write a business case why they should fix this. <laughs> That's the part why I just stopped with it. <laughs> <coughs> so, well, I'm leaving at least the gym locked on, and I'm not sure about the other sessions. Um, I need to kick somebody off. Um, so, this tool I found is called uh, Mimikatz. It was written by uh, a French hacker. Um, he seems to be very knowledgeable. <laughs> Does he have holes? <laughs> I think you have more than one of <laughs> So, this is the school I start, and the first thing uh, we need to do is we need to activate debug privileges. Uh, the debug privileges are the most powerful in the system, because it means you can open any other process from uh, anybody, and you can read in it, you can write in it, you can inject in it, uh, you can do anything. So, uh, that's a privilege you don't want to ever give to any user, uh, but that's clear, I think. So, I've saved the recipe. 
um, so that you can see that any user can do it. You don't have to be uh, a good hacker. So we're going to activate debug privileges. That went okay. Then we're going to inject a DLL into a process. And the process is LSASS Exe. The DLL is secure and the same DLL. I have made some kind of type on. Two columns. Yes, two columns. Are you French? <laughs> <laughs> so I have now successfully injected uh, the DLL. The only thing I need to do is call get local passwords. Password? Too, too many S's for Yeah, not really a very good thing. Too many beers. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> so, I have a user named Jim, and his password is Jimmy Iops. <laughs> uh, I have the administrator that's logged onto the console, and his password is password. And we can actually see that we got the password twice. We get it once from W Digest, uh, which is one of the security packages in Windows, <laughs> and it's um, for authenticating uh, via HTTP. And I see no, absolutely no good reason why this should be in clear text in memory. And the other is TS package, uh, which is terminal server, and because uh, ZenApp leads obviously on terminal server. Um, we get Citrix passwords, we get RDS passwords, we get Windows passwords. Um, I even had a good usage case for this. I needed to implement a script somewhere that needed to run as a scheduled task with a specific user, and nobody knew the password. They didn't dare to reset it because they didn't dare to reset it because they didn't know what was going to break. So I just ran the scheduled task, and when it was finished, I ran this tool, and it gave me the password. So. Um, Yeah, this, this is the scary part. Is it's download, it's click start, um, and there you go. And I'm just replicating it. But would you need debug? Right. So yes. So right. Do you need on the system? The first uh, Windows 2000. Uh, that was the scariest one because you have to be user, mm. and then you can do it even remotely. Mm -hmm. So I'm very glad that when we're all running 2000, that we don't know about this. Um, the XP, uh, yeah, I don't think it's really impacting anybody. Um, the 2003, 2008, or two. Where does this leave us? I mean, uh, we have to be admin. So theoretically speaking, this is not a violation of security. Because if you're an admin, you can become system. If you can become system, you can do anything. But still, um, there is no good reason for uh, these passwords to be there in clear text. As so, people reuse their password. Yes, <laughs> I just, just like you do. Just like I do. Mm -hmm. but, but who reuses their password for more than one? I'm not telling you that. But, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but not that password. Well, he already knows. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's already already in trouble my system. The thing I'm hoping is that vendors uh, react on, on these kinds of things and, and they can react together because this works on 2003, this works on 2008, it works on R2. But you said that isn't going to be that big of an issue. That isn't a big of, that big of an issue because you have to be a system administrator. But when I look at a big enterprise, for example, Apple Bank in the Netherlands, they have a system administration team. They are the only one that have domain admin rights. And they have all other teams that are uh, managing the banking software and that's using the same passwords. And yes, pages, so. and, and you get any user's password. So, for instance, you can get the financial manager's password yeah. and increase your salary a little. No, you just have the password and it's not auditable, it's not seen. And um, often, Sometimes we need to give permissions to, uh, for instance, a vendor that calls remotely into a system. Mm -hmm. And yeah. often they say, yeah, make him a local admin. I mean, he can only do stuff local, and if he blows it, 
But if any admin, domain admin logs onto this box, he is the local admin, so he can get your password. And what about the, the new server version? <laughs> <That's coming. laughs> No, I, I didn't check test it, but um, I, I, I think it will work because Microsoft, uh, I traced some bugs down from 2008 R2 to 2003 and in 2000 and they were already there in Windows 84. Um, so the code survives uh, the versions of the OS. So it would be an interesting uh, test. Yeah, but the only thing you can do is always use two-factor authentication. Okay. Actually, you, you, you could use Kerberos. Yeah. You could use Kerberos. That's not too factor, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't have your password in the local system. So well, just the problem about is that um, even if you do the logon with Kerberos, it still keeps uh, your password perhaps because uh, you might need to authenticate later on <coughs> somewhere else. So, for instance, um, I tested uh, a solution from uh, a certain vendor that does smart card software. That's not the name <laughs> there. And um, they have this smart card logon with an extra code and an extra password. But in the end, they do a Windows logon with a Windows password that perhaps the user doesn't even know because he does his smart card thing. But if you go to any other box, you can use this Windows credentials to do the logon. So the two-factor authentication is only helping for the first logon. Because when you're logging to a sec uh, second software pack, you still use the password. You're not going to yes. use the factor authentication there. Yes. Any other question as well? Yes. Uh, after the 2000, you, you had to be logged on locally. You could, uh, it was only yes. 2000 that was uh, uh, vulnerable to, to, to do it remotely. Yes, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do it remotely for uh, OS is higher than uh, Windows 2000. <coughs> And actually for 2003, we can call the API remotely, and it gives us back the details. But the API that they use to encrypt um, has a certain feature where you can say uh, the credentials can only be decrypted on the same box. So that's why it's not working remotely. Um, so it was a better fix than they did for XP. Uh, but why is it there, and why is it accessible remotely? I mean. It's not needed remotely, so my guess is this is some kind of legacy and they don't really dare to take it off because they don't know who uses it. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thanks for your attention. <laughs>